Today I want to share an exercise with you that is a lot of fun. Everyone that I've done this with loves it. I've done it at colleges, I've done it at clinics, I've done it at rock camps, I've done it at jazz camps. And it works for everybody and it's fun. And you can even mix different level players on this. We could have a like a intermediate level middle school player and a, a college level player. And they're going to find common ground in this exercise because it's all about following each other and creating a pattern that neither person knew before they started the exercise. I call this exercise Simon. And if any of you have done this before, as soon as I say Simon, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But the, I don't know if you remember that old game Simon, where it was like a red light, a green light, a blue light, and a yellow light. And a green light would light up, and then you'd have to hit the green light. And then it would go green, yellow, and you'd go green, yellow, green, yellow, red, green, yellow, red, etc. So that's exactly what we're going to do today. I've limited the drum set to a five-piece drum set. So kick, snare, two toms, two cymbals, but I've, I've ruled out the cymbals in this particular example because I wanted to isolate just the toms and the snare and the bass drum. So what is going to happen is I want you to be at your drum set, headphones on, you can have your phone or your laptop or whatever you're watching this visible. Make sure you can hear. And what's going to happen is I'm going to play a note and then you're going to copy it. And then I'm going to play two notes and you're going to play the exact two notes with the exact limbs that I use. So if I, for instance, go right, left, left, right, you have to go right, left, left, right. You can't go right, left, right, left or left, right, left, right. So you have to, the rules are you have to do the exact same stick or foot that I do on the drum that I do. And we're going to keep adding until we have eight notes. Okay? So let's just go ahead and do that part of it. I'm going to play. You're going to answer. I'm going to play two notes. You're going to play the same two notes. I'm going to play three notes, etc., all the way up to eight. So let's give that a try first. Oh, yeah, at the end of our eight notes, I'm going to play all eight. You're going to repeat all eight. I'm going to play all eight. You're going to repeat all eight. And then we're going to get into the exercise portion of this. All right, here we go. Okay, now that we have that pattern down, and I'm just telling you right now, that pattern was invented in the moment that I was filming it. So it's not a preconceived pattern. And that's the beauty of this. You can do this with a friend with two drum sets, and one of you is Simon, and one of you is the person who copies Simon. And you just swing your arm at whatever you hit, and then add something to it every time. And I've done this, I've literally done this for 20 years at least, and I have never seen a repeated pattern. It's the craziest thing. I mean, when you include two symbols and also using your left foot, which I've eliminated for this particular one, it's, it's almost infinite. I mean, I literally have not seen a repeated pattern. So anyway, let's take this pattern. It turned out to be, uh, let's see, what was it? Kick, snare, tom, floor tom, snare, kick, snare, floor tom. We're gonna take that pattern and we're gonna play it as eighth notes 
eight times in a row. Here we go. Okay, now that we've done eight repetitions, and you may need to do more than eight repetitions. Maybe you've done it a couple times, because now we're going to speed it up. We're going to do it twice as fast, so we're going to turn them into 16th notes, and we're going to play the same eight measures worth, so we're going to play the pattern 16 times this time. 16 times in a row as 16th notes. All right, you ready? Here we go. Okay, now that you've done the 16th note version and all those repetitions, 16 repetitions, it should start to feel comfortable. You should kind of have a handle on how it works. Now, I'm going to throw you total curveball, and we're going to go into 8th note triplets. So we're going to play this 8 note pattern as 8th note triplets. We have to play the pattern three times in a row for it to equal two measures of 4-4 four, four time. So we want this to last eight measures still. So we're going to have to play this 12 times in a row. The eight note pattern 12 times in a row as eighth note triplets will equal eight measures of 4-4 four, four time. I hope that makes sense. The eight note pattern played as eighth note triplets. We're going to play that eighth note pattern three times in a row to equal two measures. But we want to play eight measures, so we're going to play it 12 times in a row to equal eight measures. Okay? Here we go. Pretty crazy, huh? Even though you've done the pattern a bunch of times, I'm sure it felt a little awkward to play an eight note pattern as triplets. Because usually if you're playing triplets, a six note pattern, a 12 note pattern, those kinds of things resolve cleanly within the beats. But an eight note pattern, it takes a while for the resolution to come back to the beginning. So down beats are falling at different parts of the pattern. And even though physically your body can do it, your mind is saying, what is this? What is this? Why is this not making sense? So I want you to really think about that. And I talk about this a lot. A lot of times, the physical motion is not the thing hanging us up. It's our perception of what's going on. Our mind is so used to hearing things resolve at certain places in our personal playing. And when we throw a curveball to that part of everything, we can become confused at what's going on. So it's interesting. The body knows before the mind knows a lot of the time. And just be aware of that. Think about that concept for a while. Think about how your mind is functioning and how your body is functioning and how you can build muscle memory and repetition and your body starts to understand a pattern. But as soon as you put it in a different configuration, a different framework, it might feel uncomfortable or might feel like it's going to fall apart. That's because your mind is trying to categorize it in a new way and it's not understanding it. Something important to think about. Anyway, okay, so let's move on now to groove and fill. So we're going to play three measures of time, completely simple time. 
And I think it's important to play simple time. I used to let the students do anything they wanted as their groove and then play the fill. But I started realizing it's very difficult for people to play very simple pocket groove. So I am requesting that you play like I'm playing and the groove is boom, cat, boom, cat. We're going to do three measures. Ka, boom. And then the fill. Boom. Ka, doom, doom. Ka, doom. Ka, boom. Boom. Ka. We're going to do a three measure groove and the one measure fill as eighth notes. So we're going to do that whole thing eight times. 32 measures. Okay? Here we go. Okay, great. Now that you've done that, we're going to do it again. Except now we're going to play the fill as 16th notes. So you're going to play the fill twice in that final fourth measure of each phrase. Are you keeping that pocket simple? And I'm not talking about your version of simple. I'm talking about one, two, three, four. Be very cautious and very aware of you playing and wanting to do something extra, wanting to do something, anything extra, is not the assignment. And yes, it's great to be able to improvise, and, it's, and that's why we play music, to express ourselves. But it's also important to have focus and discipline and intention. Boom, cat, boom, cat. It's a very challenging tempo, and it's a very challenging assignment to only play one, two, three, four. Make sure you're doing that. It's super important. Super important because we're trying to train our mind to have focus, patience, and discipline. And then the fill happens. We're going to do this whole four measure phrase eight times. So it's another 32 measures of playing, three measures of time, one measure of fill, twice as fast as six, their 16th notes this time, playing them twice. Here we go.
Okay, you guessed it. Now it's time to do the same thing again, except triplets. The eight measure phrase as eighth note triplets. Now remember earlier I said you have to play the phrase three times in a row for it to equal two bars of time. So now we're going to play two bars of time. Two, ah, boom, ba, boom, ba. Boom. Bop. Back into it. So two bars of time. We're going to play that eighth note pattern three times in a row to equal two measures. And that whole four bar phrase, we're going to do it eight times again. Here we go. Okay, so now let's go to the final exercise for this portion of the lesson. There's a lot more that we do with this, but I just want to give you this chunk today, and then we'll probably go deeper in a later lesson with having to do with left foot coordination with this pattern that we've created. But right now, what I'm going to do, and I've done this with tons of students, is I'm going to give you an entire form, and you're going to follow the form. You're going to follow, follow this formula that I'm going to lay out for you right now. The fill is always going to be 16th notes, which means you have to play the fill two times in a row to equal one measure of time. Okay, So you're going to play three measures of time and then one measure of 16th note fill. Then you're going to play two measures of time and two measures of 16th note fill. Then you're going to play one measure of time and three measures of 16th note fill. And then you're going to play two measures of time, two measures of 16th note fill, and then three measures of time and one measure of 16th note fill. It's just a way to start having to concentrate for a longer period of time. Keep track of where you are, understand the longer form of this whole thing. So see how this goes for you. Okay, here we go.
Okay, excellent. I hope this was enjoyable for you and I hope that you got something out of it. I made that pattern up in the moment that we were doing it in the beginning of the video. And so it's something I've never done. And if you do this with somebody else, they're going to make something up. And then playing it with a person is so much fun. Doing it in real life with two people, it's so much fun. And you can, of course, extend it. An eight measure phrase is just equals one measure of eighth notes. You could do a 16 beat phrase. You could do a 12 beat phrase and make it triplet oriented. There's, it's limitless, but the thing that I love about it is because you're doing one note at a time to create the Simon game, one note at a time keeps you from defaulting into something that you've already worked out. Especially if you're trying to kind of mess with the person that you're doing the game with. You might go bop, ding, ding, boom, bop. I've seen, I've seen kids, uh, a lot of times it happens with the younger kids where they they try, to, they try to just get all over the kit because they think it's funny, but then all of a sudden you're playing the groove and you've got to do it like 16th notes. And it turns into almost an athletic event, which is so cool. First of all, because the creativity is like, where did this come from? But when you speed it up, you start to hear this other new little shape within this random selection of notes from the instrument. So I love this game. I've been, like I said before, I've been doing it forever and everyone just has such a fun time with it. And I hope you do too. And like I said, we can go further with this and we will, where we're going to start incorporating left foot movement with this fill. So this fill just continues. It becomes an ostinato and we start doing things with the left foot. It's a lot of fun. That's not for today. This is for today. I wish you all the best. Happy practicing. Talk to you soon.